Hi, this is Hongshu from Motion Circles. In this video, let's see how we can transform our After Effects projects with a couple simple styles and effects. This is my animation before I apply everything in this video, and this is it after. Let's jump right in. There are a few ways you can add gradient to your layers. One of the best ways is to use layer styles. It's easy to control and give you the best flexibility. Let's go inside our layer and add a couple gradient layer styles. Now I have my big circle here. Right click, let's get a gradient overlay. And then within the gradient overlay, let's go to the edit gradient colors. Over here in this window, we can change to the color that we like. Let's turn on our color palette here and then go to edit gradient. Let's add this orange color at the beginning and then in the middle part, let's add this color here and then let's go to this purple at the end. And this is going to be our color. Click on OK. We can also change the angle to whatever looks nicer. Next, I'll just add another gradient to this big circle in the middle. Right click, let's get gradient overlay and then go inside. We can change the gradient color to the one we have in the palette. And that can be our color for the middle circle. We can change the angle of the gradient. And the last thing is our small circle here. Let's copy the gradient color from this big half circle and then paste it onto the small circle here. After you have the gradient color you like, you can then copy this and apply it to your other layers as well and then change the color as you see fit. It can really help add another dimension to your project. Now let's talk about the glow effect. There are two places you can add glow effects. One is through layer styles and the other one is through effects and presets panel with the traditional glow. First, let's go inside our layer styles. You can choose either outer glow or inner glow. For this case, I'm going to use inner glow. I want to give it the feeling of adding a highlight to my object. It will just help separate our object with little from the background and give it some lights. We can change the color or change the size or the range to soften it out a little. Now we can also stack this with a traditional glow as well. Of course, this is all personal preference. You could also use a plugin like Deep Glow to give it a nicer or softer looking glow compared to the traditional After Effects glow. For me, I would prefer Deep Glow any time of the day. However, it's not free and you will have to pay for that. It does make the glow look more natural and more epic in a sense. Next, if you have some animated simple shape elements, you want to add some fun stretches to your shape, I would recommend using Echo Effect. This technique is fairly simple to use. All you need is to go select the layers you want to apply Echo to, go inside the Effects and Presets panel and search for Echo Effect. You can then adjust the setting to make the echo time really small, like 0 0.0002 we have here, then change the number of echoes, let's say 10. Now you will get the stretch animation to whatever layers you apply it to. It adds another dimension to the complexity of your animation and making it fun and interesting to look at. Before we go to the next technique, please give me a like on this video if you find it helpful. Your like is really important for me and this channel to grow to be able to reach more people and help more people. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more content like this. Next, let's talk about texture. You can always make a flat layer look super interesting by adding some texture. And there are multiple ways you can add textures. First, you could just apply a simple noise to your layer or an adjustment layer just to add a little grain to the overall composition. I usually find that 5 to 10% works pretty well. You could also add some noise to your layer styles in your glow settings, but if you want to take everything a step further, you can add animated texture and it's super simple to set up as well. Let's go in, put in the noise texture. All we need to do is go to rotation, hit on the stopwatch to add a keyframe, and then go forward five frames, command right arrow, one, two, three, four, five, change the rotation a little bit, and then one, two, three, four, five, change the rotation again. You can do it randomly, and then go to five frames further, one, two, three, four, five, change it again, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we have all these different rotations and then we can select all of them, right click, toggle hold keyframes. We have a pattern that's animating in a stop motion. The next thing I want to do is I want to hold down option on the keyboard and then click on the stopwatch, left click. I want to add in a loop out expression. Now, if I play the animation, you can see from one second, it's just going to loop my animation for the first second and then keep playing my animation throughout the whole 10 seconds. 
now I have a texture loop. Finally, we need to talk about chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration causes a blurred or color distorted image. Now as a motion designer, we can add this to our project and make it look not so clean and kind of simulate some real life experience when we see things. To do this, we can duplicate the layer or composition and add a shape channel effect and then move the layers manually. Then just tweak the setting to your liking. I mainly just play with position and scale property. And there you have it. We've added chromatic aberration to our animation. That's it with this video. You can find a link to download this animated project in the description below. Please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.